Today in class, we discuss the Puppet Warp tool, which is a really fun tool to edit vectors and change the way things are positioned. In order to do today's activity, you're going to have to access the Puppet Warp tool. It is not part of your default toolbar, so we're going to be accessing the All Tools drawer on the bottom. You see these three dots? And just scroll through and look up the Puppet Warp. There is no quick key for it, so we can't pull it up quickly like this. Once we get down here, to add a tool from the tool drawer to the toolbar, you just click and drag, and when you see a little gray box over your toolbar, you just let go. Okay, when you want to close this, you can hit escape or those three dots one more time. Now you'll see at the top here, I gave you some things to know about the Puppet Warp tool to help you out. One, in order to use this tool, you have to select on an object first with your selection tool and then access the Puppet Warp tool. Two, most of the time when you select something, the Puppet Warp tool will have pins automatically added based on the artwork you select. But you can add additional pins by clicking anywhere or you can select a pin that exists and hit delete to remove it. Some tips to do this well is there is a mesh. So I'm gonna show you an example. I'm gonna take the girl's leg here, which you're gonna end up retouching to look like the image on the right. There's always a mesh applied. So a mesh is just showing you this. So if I hit my Puppet Warp tool, you see these gray lines, that's the mesh. If I go to my properties panel, I can hit this little button that says show mesh or erase it. If I only want one thing to move without affecting everything else, I can hold down alt on my computer and you notice all my other pins are not affected. If I don't hold down Alt and I simply move this, other things will be affected. So oftentimes it's really helpful to hold down Alt while you work. Sometimes you need to move more than one pin at once. To do that, you hold Shift to select multiple pins. So I have the foot selected, I'm gonna hold Shift, hold the knee, and now when I move them, both the knee and the foot will move. But if I hold Alt, only those will move and not the first part of the leg. Now the key with this tool is some patience because it's very easy to get heavy handed with this. So you're only gonna move things very, very briefly and very slowly. So this is what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna select this, go to the pen tool and then just be like, right, because that looks crazy. What you really wanna consider is look at the final image. It looks like the knee has been brought up. So let's take this knee pin and kind of move it up a little bit, right? I can also rotate things to control how far things are pulled. And I notice the foot is kind of pulled too and I'm gonna rotate the foot a little bit. I, I'm not being really dramatic in my movements. I'm being really subtle and I'm moving things little by little. Most of the time, this is not a one and done thing. You have to go back and forth and fiddle. Right? And you can go back and change this. Let's say you're like, I think I pulled the foot too much. I can rotate the foot a little bit more. Now in this case, all these shapes have been grouped, right? The piece of clothing that makes the legs, the foot, all of that. So they're all affected. Right? If they weren't grouped, they would react a little differently. So for each one of these, you're going to look at the image all the way on the left, and you're going to try to match it with the image on the right. For example, in this case, his body and his arms are separate on purpose. If I take his arm, select my Puppet Warp tool, and click, I have no pins there. I'm going to put three, and then I'm going to start moving things. Now let's say I put pins I don't like. I can select on them and delete them if I feel like they're too much, and I can still undo. You're going to repeat this technique for all of these, including the cute little doggies here. You're going to see that some of them have their head tilted or pulled up or down, their tail moved. You have to be really gentle about this. I wanted to make the last one the most complicated to show you how much you can change a shape. But in this case, I showed you all the pins I used. So you wanna challenge yourself, try this one. The last part of today, and the part you should spend the most time on, is recreating this vector of this alien here. You're gonna recreate the vector. I showed you the shapes I created using the shape tool, shape builder, and the fill and stroke. You can make your monster or your alien any color you'd like. But once you create it, you're gonna make three copies. So your original and then two other copies right here. I would recommend grouping things before you copy them just so it's easy to move stuff over. Then you're gonna use your puppet warp to manipulate the little tentacles or the eyes or even the mouth to create three versions of this alien. So you should have your original that's kind of flat and looks just like this. And then two other versions that look like the alien has been moved in some way. The more organic and natural, the better. If you happen to finish earlier, there's an extension built below for you to create a scene for your alien to be in. With the Puppet Warp, remember not to overclick and add too many pens and be super patient.